Hi everybody, this is Lara at PureElliotWave.com with your weekly analysis of Bitcoin. For the short term I expect possibly a little bounce or some sideways movement and after that I expect a pullback is probably going to continue. The Elliott Wave counts changed a little bit this week and I'm expecting support about 44,143. If that expectation is wrong it may not be deep enough. In the midterm, if we see a new low but below 28893.63, that would be very bearish. I would be expecting then that a primary degree second wave is underway. And a first target for support would be 28250. If that's wrong, it wouldn't be too low, it would not be low enough. Okay, Elliott Wave analysis first, classic analysis last. Weekly charts this week, and next week I'll be looking at monthly charts because then we'll have the month of November complete. The bigger picture sees a huge impulse unfolding at super cycle degree and the end of the second wave is here where wave 2 ends, wave 3 begins. Cycle wave 3 may only subdivide as an impulse which will be labelled at primary degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Primary 3 may only subdivide as an impulse which will be labelled at intermediate degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Intermediate 1 and 2 are complete. Intermediate 3 may only subdivide as an impulse. It will be labelled at minor degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The change this week to the Elliott Wave count is seeing minor wave 1 over up here. When I look at this movement on the weekly chart and on the daily chart, it does look like a pretty good 5 wave impulse. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there is support from classic technical analysis, which is somewhat bearish this week, and I will expect this pullback of the last couple of weeks to continue a little bit further. So, in the first instance, I'll expect it's minor wave 2. One of the core Elliott Wave rules for an impulse is the second wave may not move beyond the start of the first wave. The invalidation point for this wave count is at 28893.621. When wave 2 at minor degree is over, then this wave count will be extremely bullish. It will expect a third wave at 1, 2, 3, 4 large degrees. We're not there yet. And again, my targets at primary and cycle degree are highly provisional. This is not an Elliott wave, sorry, this is not a Fibonacci ratio. Within cycle wave 1, its primary degree third wave was 38.87 times the length of its first wave. If we see that same relationship within cycle 3, this would be a reasonable target for primary 3, 417507. And the duration expected is possibly a Fibonacci 144 weeks for primary 3, which would see it end next year in December. Let's take a look at the daily chart now, where I think we're going to go from this low, the end of minute 4, within minor 1, is just off to the left of the chart, and here's the end of minor wave 1. I've drawn a Fibonacci retracement along the length of minor wave 1, and the initial expectation for support for minor 2 will be the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of minor 1 at 44133.895. If that expectation is wrong though, it won't be low enough because Bitcoin's second wave corrections do have a tendency to be very deep in the 80-90% to 90 range and I've given you that range in terms of price in the text article and it's in the summary as well. And so when we get down to the point, well if we get down to the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio, I'll be looking at the structure of minor wave 2. If the structure could be complete and if we see strength off lows for the start of minor 3, then I'll call it complete. But if price just keeps on falling through this target, then we'll use that range, 80 to 90%, the length of minor wave 1. We're not there yet. The most likely structure for minor 2 would be a zigzag, that's by a very wide margin the most common Elliott Wave corrective structure. This will be labelled A, B, C. A subdivides as a 5. B should be a 3 wave structure, could be a triangle, that's, te that's 5 waves technically, but we classify it as a 3. Minute B may subdivide as any Elliott Wave corrective structure. It's far too early to tell what it's going to be. All I can say is it looks most likely to be incomplete. 
B waves are the most complicated of all Elliott wave structures to analyse and they're a nightmare to trade, they're best avoided. So this little bounce or sideways movement for minute B, it could be a quick sharp bounce subdividing as a zigzag, it could be a sideways consolidation like a combination, it could be a triangle or it could be a flat correction. It could be over in just a few days or it could last a couple of weeks. Either way, if I have minute A correctly labelled as a 5 wave impulse, then minute B may not move beyond its start above the all time high 68789.625. When minute wave B may be a complete corrective structure, then another 5 wave structure down for C would be expected to end minor 2. When I can know with some confidence where B ends and where C begins, I can use the Fibonacci ratio between A and C to add to the target calculation for minor 2 to end. At that stage, the expectation of this target may change or it may widen to a small zone. OK, let's take a look at the alternate now. Going back to the weekly chart, instead of 1, 2, 1, 2, we're considering now the possibility that primary wave 1 was over at the last all-time high for Bitcoin. For the short to midterm, this is quite a bearish wave count for Bitcoin. It expects that a pullback for primary 2 may be in its early stages, and if this target is wrong, it will be not low enough, because like I said before, Bitcoin's second wave corrections, particularly at primary degree, do tend to be particularly deep. A primary degree second wave correction would be expected to last months and maybe even up to a year, although probably within six months it should be over within six months. At this very early stage there's a little bit of support from classic technical analysis for this bearish Elliott wave count, but not enough support. To, for confidence in it, I would rather assume that the trend remains the same until proven otherwise. The first Elliott wave count is bearish for the midterm, but not as bearish as this one. If we get a new low below this point back down here, the first Elliott wave count would be invalid, and then that would leave this as the sole Elliott wave count. Primary 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below 3191.3035, so either way I do expect that low to be sustained. At the daily chart level now, this high for primary wave 1 is this point up here. I'm labelling this movement the same, a 5 wave structure down, looking for a second wave correction, may not move beyond the start of wave 1, above 68789.625. When 2 is over, 3 down should begin. Primary wave 2 should last months and possibly up to a year, but should be over probably within six months. OK, let's take a look now at classic analysis and see how much support or lack thereof there is for either of those wave counts. At the weekly chart level, at the last high we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple bearish divergence between price and RSI. And this swing here, price makes a new high here, RSI fails to move into overbought territory. This is a failure swing. If you want to look for support for a very bearish wave count, you could consider that this would support that more bearish wave count. In conjunction with that, we have a strong bearish engulfing candlestick pattern, and it has pushed from volume. This was last week. So again, more support for a more bearish wave count. The short-term volume profile is bearish. And over RSI, ADX did reach ex very extreme. It was just over 70 for the previous upward trend, still declining. The positive DX line is still above the negative, so no trend change yet indicated. It's brought down well down from extreme levels now, but it's still not below both DX lines, so I'd expect probably some more downward or sideways movement to resolve that before ADX is ready to set up for a new trend. And stochastics moving into neutral territory. So at the weekly chart level, there is a little support for a more bearish Elliott wave count, but there's not enough at the daily chart level for me to really consider that that's a more likely scenario. There's only single bearish divergence here between price and RSI, but it is pretty strong. The short-term volume profile is bearish, and it's this short-term vo volume profile that I'm relying on most heavily to tell me to expect more downward movement, at least in the short term, for Bitcoin. Now, it doesn't mean we can't get a sideways consolidation or a little bounce first, so I'm expecting that for the B wave, but overall, I expect this downward pullback to continue and probably to develop into a proper downward trend. At the daily chart level, ADX is still declining, 
after reaching extreme but not very extreme for this market for the previous upward trend. The negative DX line is now above the positive so if ADX turns up it would then indicate a downward trend. Watch on balance volume carefully. Let's see if we get a break above resistance or below support. This resistance and support line is starting to have some reasonable technical significance, but the trend lines have a bit of a slope, so not so much. But if we get a break above resistance, that would be bullish for the short term. A break below support would be bearish for the short term. We've been over RSI, it's well in neutral territory now. Stochastics returning to neutral. If we do have a new downward trend developing, this can remain oversold for quite a while. And ATR is overall flat as price moves lower, so not particularly bearish. But that's normal for the early stage of a new trend for Bitcoin. That's my analysis for Bitcoin this week, and I hope all of our members had a fabulous weekend.